Hi there. In this video, I just wanted to summarise what the effects of particular violations of Gauss Markov assumptions were on our least squared estimators being blue. So remember that the Gauss Markov theorem says that under a certain set of criteria, OLS estimators are the best linear unbiased estimators possible. Okay, so now we're going to think about what the effect of violations of particular Gauss Markov assumptions have on um, whether our OLS estimators are blue. So first of all, thinking about the zero, zero conditional mean of errors assumption, we spoke that if we do have a violation of this particular assumption, uh, another word for this is saying that we have an endogeneity in our model, then in fact we have bias in our OLS estimators. And that's a really, really serious violation of um, the gauss markov assumption because if we have bias in our model, then essentially we can't trust the outputs of our OLS estimators because of the fact that they're not going to be particularly indicative of what's going on in the population. Um, so yeah, that's the um, problem with the zero conditional mean of errors assumption being violated. Now thinking about the assumption of no perfect collinearity in your model. Well, this is slightly different to the other gauss markov assumptions in the sense that if we do have perfect collinearity amongst regressors, then it actually means that we can't even estimate our um, regression equation. If you try and put it into stata or eviews, it will just break down. It will come up with some sort of error message. And that's the intuition behind that is because essentially you've put two or more different regressors which are essentially telling you exactly the same thing. And it's going to be impossible to differentiate between one's effect from another. And that's going to mean that it's not going to be possible to find unique values of parameters in my regression equation. Yeah, so that's very serious in the sense that we can't even estimate our regression equation in the presence of perfect collinearity of regressors. Okay, now thinking about the assumption of no serial correlation of errors, we said that uh, in general that doesn't lead to bias in our sort of OLS estimators, um, but it, can, it does lead to our OLS estimators being inefficient. In a sense, there are other estimators which take into account this sort of extra information and as a result, they are more efficient than OLS. And another thing to mention about no serial correlation of errors is the fact that we can't actually rely um, on a sort of normal um, standard errors in beta hat. And that's actually going to be the same for homoscedastic errors as well. If that's violated, then again, we need to adjust our standard errors of beta hat because of the fact that um, they the normal sort of standard errors in beta hat actually assume that we've got these two conditions being true. So in both circumstances, if these two conditions are violated, we need to do something to either um, correct our standard errors for the fact of serial correlation, or we need to sort of change our modeling procedure in order to get rid of this serial correlation. Um, okay, finally thinking about homoscedastic errors, well, again, that leads our OLS estimators to be inefficient. Remember, we spoke about, again, the intuition here being that if there is some sort of error structure which our model isn't taking into account, and then it is possible to construct other OLS, or other not OLS estimators rather, that are more efficient than OLS. Okay, so that's pretty much the sort of summary of the sort of the Gauss mark of um, violations which you're going to encounter in practice. And there's one sort of extra sort of bit which I need to sort of speak about, which is if I have a lag dependent variable in my model, then it actually turns out that um, the sort of violation of no um, serial correlation of errors means that our model is actually going to be biased. Our OLS estimators are going to be biased if that's if I have sort of y t minus 1 in my model. So I've got a lag dependent variable in my model. Okay, so we've discussed the sort of um, violations of the main Gauss Markov assumptions in this video. In the next few videos, we're going to be talking about how we can diagnose whether we've actually got violations of these Gauss-Markov assumptions. I'll see you then.